Yo, what up, everybody? Cameron Van Hoy. Great to see you again. Thanks for coming by. Hope you're having a great day. Um, I want to talk about an experience that I had yesterday that excited the hell out of me. I think there's something incredibly exciting going on in the world of film that a lot of people don't know about yet, and it's going to be massive, and, and I'm seeing the proof in the pudding. So yesterday, I went to a screening of a movie called Cayadita, which was made by a filmmaker named Miguel Faust, and uh, this was a film that was financed entirely from Web3, NFTs, dare we say, uh, blockchain technology, and blockchain enthusiasts. And like the story about how it came to be is a really interesting one. Um, so there's this guy, the filmmaker, and he had made a short film, right? Because you know he wants to make a feature, so he made his first short film, or maybe this was a second short film or something. But he made a short film called Cayadita, and it's the story of a maid in a wealthy home in Spain, and things that occur, and the dichotomy between you know the haves and the have-nots, and and a lot of interesting themes about masculinity, femininity, and all sorts of stuff. Beautiful film, shot wonderfully, really great performances, uh, both the short and the feature. And I'll talk more about the feature. But so he made this short film, and he also happened to be what they call in the Web three world a degen, right? So he he had his ear to the ground. He I think he like minted or early on bought like some of these, the board apes and also crypto punks, right. Which are two collections that have just skyrocketed, right. Like, you know, became worth hundreds of thousands. Like at the peak, I think the floor on like a crypto punk was like 400,000 or something. Right? So imagine you get one of these things for five bucks or a hundred bucks or whatever it is. If you're minting early on or free, because the crypto punks, I believe were free, you get one. And then all of a sudden it's worth $400,000. That's cool wealth creation. And so there's these communities of these people that got lucky. <laughs> that's what happened, right? Like maybe a few of them, no, oh, I didn't get lucky. I was really smart and I saw the trend. That's true. I, I believe that, not going to belittle it. A lot got lucky, whatever. Anyways, they made a fortune and now they're a community and they wear these PFPs on their social handles, specifically on Twitter. And you know, you know, it's like, oh, you're a punk. I'm a punk. It's like a crew, right? We got, we made money together. This is who we are. It represents that we're forward thinking, et cetera, et cetera. Kind of like the people who would stand online to get an iPhone early back in the day. Remember those people? They'd stand online, get an iPhone, and it was like, what did that say? It was like, I'm tech forward. I'm a forward thinker. Or you know, someone who wears a Rolex. I like, got, oh, you got a Rolex. I got a Rolex, right? Like we get money, whatever it is. All you know, there's all kinds of different things that we put on our bodies and wear peripherally that say something or the other about us. Um, NFT are no different. It's a trend that's here to stay, in my opinion. Uh, so the punks have a lot of money. They made a lot of money. Some of these people minted four or five of these things and they sell a few of them, make a few million dollars. And by the way, the floor, the, the cheapest price at the peak was 400,000. Some of these are worth millions, right? So you sell one, you get a million bucks. These people suddenly have money and they're a community and they chat and they hang out in this discord together. And so this dude, uh, Miguel, was in that world, the NFT world, and he saw what was happening and he wanted to make his feature film. So he went to a lot of these people and said, hey, I'm going to offer an NFT for my movie. And by buying this NFT, it's gonna, money's going to come into this wallet, this digital wallet, and that will be used to make the film. And he tiered it out. He made like really higher expensive tiered ones, middle and then like lower ones for everybody and sold a bunch of them and brought in a lot of money. And then a lot. So, so like there was just random people that heard about this it was like, Oh, that's cool. Like a movie being financed with NFTs. Let's, you know, let's be a part of that. And people would buy various ones, but then punks and apes and these people who have a lot of money in the space also heard about it and then like lended their support in even larger ways. Right, which is a really interesting thing. It really speaks to the community of this space and like the forward thinking, the tech forward thinking, and and sort of creative forward thinking of people in this this community. And I know that it gets a lot of shit in the NFT community, right? People are like ah, that community, but no, there's some really cool people and some really cool things that are occurring. And so some of these like heavy hitters, these whales as they're called, decided to come in on this movie with him and support in a mega way, right? So he was getting like the grassroots support of people like minting NFTs here. And then some of these big dudes come in. All of that resulted in this gentleman being able to make his film, which is awesome. And now within the NFT Web3 space, there is this whole community of people that are building and they call themselves Film3, 
right? It's like the name, it's, you know, there's Web3 and then there's Film3. And, and these are people who believe that blockchain, smart contracts, digital tokens, all of these things, digital assets are going to revolutionize film, right? In many ways. And when you really kind of start, you know, drinking the juice and going down the rabbit hole with them, it's like, oh, it'll, it'll disrupt and uh, advance and innovate and change distribution, production, community, marketing, uh, create like just all kinds of things. Then you start coupling AI and, you know, Unreal Engine and, and all sorts of tech behind it. And suddenly you're looking at these really cool ecosystems that are building. And for those of you that don't know, I also dropped an NFT around a film that I made called Flinch, which has just been incredible. And the community that's built around it has been phenomenal and it's just growing every day. And so there is something amazing happening in this space. And last night, I went to the screening of Kayadita and I watched the movie with a bunch of DJs, a bunch of people from the film three world. Because the filmmaker's from Spain, he was here for a conference, a film three conference, decided he's going to show his movie. And just these people showed up. You know, there were there were film three people who, up until this point, a lot of them only ever congregate on Twitter, on Discord, right? Behind their PFPs, they talk in Twitter spaces and post and follow. And this sort of this conference comes and they all fly in from all over and come from their, their, their homes, wherever that is, to congregate, to talk about films, to share the things that they're working on, to spread ideas, to network, to build. And at this screening last night, I saw all of these people coming, people who have only ever met because of these NFTs, blockchain, film three these communities that have formed online and they're supporting each other, buying these NFTs, promoting, building within projects. Other projects offer opportunities to create lore around the projects and own IP within the larger franchises or certain projects like, you know, Kayadita or Keepers of the Inn are just like specific one-off films where filmmakers are making cool things and then allowing their community to get it like a deeper engagement in what they're doing and have more access. And I mean, as an example with Flinch, I, there's an incredible community of people that love the project and they hold these NFTs and they have these characters that exist within the universe. And I've come to know many of them online, right? Because it's like, it would be like on this YouTube channel, if someone was commenting a lot and I'm commenting back, we kind of like build a rapport. Well, you know, like on Twitter, you can go further with that. You can just jump in Twitter spaces and just talk, right? You're just talking with people. So you get to know people. And now these people are coming out and I'm sitting with them and I'm meeting them. And they're like, they love the movie and they love the project. And the same for Kayadita, right? There's people that just love that short film, love what he's doing. Love, they know him in, in Twitter spaces. And now they're sitting right there watching the film, giving input, it, being a part of the movie making process. Some of these people never would have fathomed that they could be a part of a process like this. And so they all sat in this dark room, a really cool space, downtown LA, and watched this film that was birthed of the Web3 movement by a filmmaker from that community and, and are there to show support and gave great notes. And I was supercharged when I saw it because it's really the vision of what's happening in that space coming to life. And it's so powerful. And I've seen a lot of different trends occur in my years in film and in the film business. And I got to say, this is one of the most exciting moments I've ever witnessed. You know, I, I don't, you know, it must have been really exciting, like watching Star Wars on the big screen for the first time, seeing that visual effects or even 2001 A Space Odyssey, you know. Um, the DVD, when that first came out, I was really young. So I, I, to me, it was like, oh, cool. What's this pop it in? You know, but like really is if I was my age, then go, wow, this is going to change the game forever. You know, sound when sound came to the movies, that must've been an absolutely incredible moment. Color. There's all kinds of new tech that really changes and revolution. And also just communities like the beginning days of Sundance early Sundance when it was banging, not that it's not banging now, but like it was, I think when you look at the roster of dope movies that were really coming out in the style of movie back then, um, like that moment of, Hey, we're going to like the, the birth of the film festival moment, or even the birth of 
you know, in the 60s, 70s, when the studio system started moving into working with, you know, filmmakers like Coppola for The Godfather and Friedkin and, and Scorsese and like this whole new school of filmmaker was just revolutionizing the industry and changing from what the old Hollywood system was, right? And watching these movies. Um, that type of change and excitement from what I see is happening via Web3. And I think at first, a lot of people are going to write it off and not really recognize what's happening. But what I have seen over this last few days from the conference that I spoke at with the community that I have with Flinch and then watching Kayadita last night and seeing that screening and those people come out for that filmmaker. And, and the film was fantastic, by the way. You know, uh, we were privy to, to an early cut. He had just finished shooting two weeks ago, which the cut that I saw, there's no music, sounds rough, no sound design, like the s simplest sound design, just the basics, no, no dialogue editing, basic sound design. If there's like an actual source music track in the film, there would be something there, but no score whatsoever. So largely silent. Two weeks after filming, and it was one of the best rough cuts I've ever seen. Rough cuts generally are absolutely, you know, it's just like hard to watch. Um, there's some real magic happening here. So, yeah, I just wanted to do a piece on that because it was, it was very exciting to see. And I hope that we all look back at this video in a few years and go, wow, like he was right. That's where the juice was because I, I think that's what's going to happen. So pay attention, people. But let me know. Let me know what you guys think about the the Web3 NFT film thing and how that's going to play out. Uh, please drop some comments. I'd love to chat about it.